Hello there everybody and welcome back to episode 15 of my tutorial series for Songs of Six version 65. Today we will go over the healthcare technologies, medicine and psychology down here, completing pretty much the, the baseline of the services for our city. Everything after that will be pretty much high quality, luxury, and high culture stuff. This is also being garnered today by upgrading our smelters and our bakeries a little bit, as we still need to expand on our production rates. The work that I will be getting myself towards to is also getting into a multicultural society with, with some luck. We will start with that topic today as well. So first up, let's talk about these medicine technologies while I am getting myself the necessary researchers because we need more tech points, my friends. So we're staffing out this place entirely cranking up the amount of knowledge will which will come out of this house by a lot so the next technologies that we require medicine will unlock the physician the physician is really powerful as it is a way to finally get diseases fully under control and it also has a pretty significant impact on our service uh, landscape. So let's build up one physician for the city. The real nasty part about these guys is they require tools for their trade. So they are one of the really high cost, high uh, prestige workshops. But well, we gotta bite that bullet and we will have to work a little bit around that since my city is still not capable of using or producing tools properly we're going to disable them on all the workshops that i had them previously enabled on i did that mostly for the tutorial's sake we will now employ back the tool makers and we will then have a couple of tools that we can use for the construction of this place and for other projects in the future so let's get back to the construction of the physician there we go so i'll make that a 10 on 10 thing as i tend to have these uh high quality and costy things a little bit smaller let's speed up the game properly so here we go workbenches i'll make that enough for two physicians and this is one of those cases where i just like to go for the uh strategy if ever we need more of the physicians, we will just place more of these small workshops down, and that's gonna be that. Here we go. It's already costly enough as it is, but that's mostly because of the tool in, uh, input there. Okay, so let's check back with our tech points. Perfect. So we get there to the smelter refined technology. And let's see, our smelters are putting out 24 pieces of metal per day. The smithies are not able to uh, get that down. So we will just have to wait for the metal amount to be complete there. But as you see here, our tool stockpiles are racking up quite nicely. So we're just going to keep one smith employed on that business. And we are also going to start exporting that stuff, which goes over our stockpiles. Highly unlikely with such a low production rate, but I know that these things are stupidly valuable. So we rather export our, our, over, our potential overspills. It's only one worker that's bound here. He has the easy life, waiting for the export that will never happen. And there we go. So if ever we produce so much that we can sell it, we will sell it. I highly recommend you to go for these little uh, things as well, as they are really powerful and nice to uh, upgrade your uh, output of, of money in the whole city. All right. So at the same time, as you see here, it totally drained my wallet. That's just the point. Our city is not really good at producing ores, and therefore our metal income is quite costly. So tools are for now a no-no. So, but we got the physician, and as you see here, we already get a nice increase of um, 
of happiness. Together with hospitals, I don't know, do we already have one? I thought we had. Let me check. Together with hospitals, we are now um, fully staffed out to fight off diseases. Here we go. So the hospital and the physician are mostly costly in terms of setup. But when they are running, they are basically really, uh, as you see there, we, we don't have to spin anything there. We just I can let it go. So let's upgrade the smelter, as this will be a really huge buff for our industries as well. And in between that, we are unlocking the psychology tech now. So let's go. Our deranged people finally will have a place where they can be at home. So let's see. Um, what was that thing called again? Got the name. The asylum, exactly. So if I if they are working still like they did the last time when I checked up the rules for them, it's a pretty simple thing. The people in the asylum have a chance to turn back heal into healed individuals, and they have to stay in there long enough. And eventually they'll either die from old age or well, they'll be cured. End of the story, as far as I know. So that's uh, enough for the five people of our city. As you see here, the investment is again... Oh well, it's not that costly. It's just metal and uh, all the other things. But it's mostly um, important for the sake of getting these people back into the uh, into the uh, society because without an asylum they there is no chance of cure I don't know if there is now a guaranteed chance of cure or how this now nowadays behaves let me know if you know but either way it is really important to have these as your people need the chance to be um, cured there keep in mind that these have a uh, consumption of rations so we're going to reflect that on our decisions here Fishery reports, we don't, couldn't care less. So let's stop exporting just like, there we go. 40 pieces of rations we keep for ourselves. It's not much, but it'll get us exactly where we need to be. And that's all it takes. All right. So as you see here, tech points are flowing back up, but at the same time, we don't really have the capability of researching what we want to so i'm plotting down yet another lab but now for the first time i want to go for a um for a new strad i've been thinking about this when i prepared today's episode and as we are really quickly through with the part that i meant to get through um, we're going to work our ways towards a multicultural society today. So one thing though I meant to do still, coal-fired ovens. So coal-fired ovens are a massive gain as using coal is for one, draining my woodless, but the real important part here is that the output is the same, but the um, speed per batch goes up according to the technology, which means that Coal-fired ovens crank out more bread in, another, in a shorter amount of time, which means that is a direct upgrade for your productivity of your bakeries with just 400 tech points. That is fairly, fairly cheap. Okay, so we need more housing, so let's do this. So, I want to elaborate my thoughts about the multicultural approach. The thing that we are confronted with by now is a very simple one. We have people living in the city, which frankly are quite bad researchers. Cretonians are many things, but they are not the brightest lamps on the uh, candelabra. So um, we will get ourselves the finest thinkers that are available, and those are humans. So we're going to build a couple of houses, but we're going to build those houses. Well, the research is all happening here, so let's put the houses over here. Yeah, there we go. Just something like that. So 
let's have a look at these. Well, that has been completed. So, Cretonians, let's go here. They are really good at many things, but if we look down here to the research area, they are only at 50% fulfillment. And, well, their, their skill is at least okay. They are not unskilled, but they are unhappy while doing this. Let's get back to the humans. And if we go there, they are skillful and they love it. They are also really good at working at universities, in libraries. They also are good at farming, so they are a really good fit for intermixing with the Cretonian society. Humans also like to eat bread, just like the Cretonians, but they have other tastes that they prefer. But that's pretty okay, because humans are friends with everybody. The only downside about humans is they are criminals. Well, they tend to be criminals. Way more than Cretonians. Compared to Cretonian, humans are actually criminals. Whatever, you get the idea. Jokes aside, this is a smaller issue, but it won't be bothering you that terribly much. So, we can now wait until the lab has been finished, because we will need so many more tech points down the road. And like I said, we are not that saturated with technology that it is already a good idea to go for the next technology tech. <laughs> next research technology. In the meantime, we are still waiting for this big uh, tree orchard to finally uh, orchard to finally go into production. This will be one hell of a moment for the local economy, as that will I think our production will skyrocket from that point on. Anyways, we got now more worker more workers assigned than we actually got and we will now bid the first humans in so we double click them and there is human number one hating his life so we're going to go over into the housing menu and we're going to where was that again ah yeah here you click one of those houses and you go into the assign menu so the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to see we're going to exclude everything except for humans so there is a question mark on all of these houses meaning that they are open for everybody we're now clicking these and making sure these houses are exclusively for humans nobody from the cretonians will be able to move in here this is pretty useful as we want to have the humans living next to the labs because they are supposed to be working in there preferably so let's check with the humans and their happiness. It takes a while until the, these meters start filling. He is This one person is still very unhappy comparatively because he's obviously not, a, not picking up any services yet. But this quickly changes as he's strolling through the city and finding everything he requires. So he's looking to fulfill his needs and as you see here, Every one of these needs gets fulfilled, and then it slowly depletes. You also see it, not, and it doesn't get uh, fulfilled to 100% every time. That depends on the quality of the service. But you see that all in all, this guy thinks that this place doesn't stink for humans, and his mood goes up, so we get a, st a stronger immigrational pull for more humans, so we can authorize the next Joe. Now everything goes down again like crazy because the new guy needs to check out that this place doesn't stink either, and he's refreshing his needs, and so on, further and further, this goes down that. This way, you're getting slowly together a civilization that has more than just one species going. You don't necessarily need to assign certain buildings for certain species, it just is pretty useful if you want, for example, just like me, that these guys are working at a specific place and all. So now we don't have a method yet to make sure that the humans will be working in those labs preferably. So now we go into the workforce area and into the infrastructure, so laboratories. Uh, no, that was not the, the area. Where was it? 
work priorities found in the occupation menu. There we go. Sometimes I have my troubles navigating through this. So here we can now decide where the priorities for everybody are supposed to be. For every single job, for every field and all, so you can decide that. Here the automatic set setup is that the Cretonians prefer, prefer agricultural work over all the other things. Anyways, we go on over here to the human side and we set the preference rate for labs up to the max. And at the same time, we set up the prefer preferable rate for the Cretonians down here like that. This way, we make sure that every laboratory will always drag as many humans into the task as possible before going into any other area. These are pretty smartly pre-configured. Most of these don't need that much of a change inside there. As you see here, I wouldn't have had to do anything except for hiring more humans. And they would have been automatically been strolling into the um, into the labs. The game is very has a lot of default settings that try to give you a proper efficiency right from the get go, a really good efficiency. But it is really good to know where you can change the gauges and the valves, and this is how it goes. So we have now also the capability of changing the access for certain services. We could now say, no humans, you're not going to take the physician's uh, capacities from us. You're only allowed to go to the hospital. Boom. No humans, no physicians. This doesn't influence anything too much to begin with. But um, if your city has only very limited capacities for certain services, you might be considering this. Or it is a super nice tool for roleplay. You know, if you want to do a uh, roleplay run, this game is really well fit for that. These little rules give you that feeling to, to elevate a certain part of your culture or put the thumb on person, certain persons. Now, as we see there... These guys have a, have their own screen, like the Cretonians have. So now, congratulations, once you have two species in your city running around, you have two of these screens to manage. You could increase that by even more, but, well, it's just a lot of micromanagement hassle. So, let's see, we have still housing needed for the labs. This is uh, happening now because lots of Cretonians are working still in there because we don't have that many uh, humans here and these need to live somewhere since these houses up there are only given free for humans there is now a housing shortage for the local Cretonians. it all makes sense together so from that point on we could now try to garner the needs of the humans by making sure that we have mushrooms and eggs available or you just make sure that you get yourself some environmental things that inspire war for example as the Cretonians don't mind too much about that they are happy if there are a couple of pillars and statues kind sir but apart from that they really don't care about these things too much but you have a lot of uh, different things that you can do so elderly care it is a little bit early to go into there but whatever we are now cranking up the city by a lot so it might be wise to go into that topic right away so the I don't know rest home it was yeah the rest home is a fairly simple building but it does introduce a lot of uh, good vibes for the city in so far as as far as I understood things, it will provide a place for your elder people to be just happy. I don't know how the happiness of old people is revolving in the game without uh, these uh, rest homes, but I do know and uh, feel like it is just a cool thing to add up into your city when it is uh, available for you. So here we go for tables that are somewhat the capacity for this it's like an entertainment home for your elders basically so there it goes let's make it like that i know i'm a little bit uh, using up the room not that effectively so dance floors also increase capacity so this is a uh, building where we have two capacity increasers 
which is uh, fairly unique. And now we can install carpets and other things to increase coziness. You can now decide for yourself how far you want to take this. The costs are just pottery and uh, and furniture. It's fairly uh, low cost. The biggest investment here is for sure the technology points. The technology points for the rest home are really, really high. The resources by that point shouldn't be too much of a hassle for you to procure anymore. So we leave it like that. And let's go over to, I think here. Yeah, there it is. So retirement excess. I don't know if it is uh, differing for different species, but as we see here, we can now set up also a retirement age. So people can actually take retirement earlier. These are all things that you can go for as your city grows larger and larger and is capable of uh, hosting more and more people. So we have a shortage of workforce. Let's take that out real quick. And with a multicultural city, you now have also the capability of just setting up uh, human procreation at some point. So you can have your own human babies in the city. And uh, basically, you can now do everything you want to do um, with this place, uh, with, with the humans, as you are able to do with the Cretonians. There we go. We're just now increasing the uh, workforce of these. And the fun part is that these guys will now take over jobs in the labs and therefore slowly but steadily be increasing your output of science by upgrading the quality of the service. This is a pretty nifty thing and we can just keep it up and as you see here all of the humans moving into these houses happen to be scientists. There we go. Many new scientists arriving and we could similarly now get ourselves some Dondorians into the city and uh, assign them to the crafting business. They excel at mining, although they don't like it, but they also excel at crafting things. So Dondor uh, Dondorian masons and uh, carpenters would speed up the production of the city by a lot. So why, why not do this as well? So we're going to pick up a couple of houses and the Dondorians they they have different needs than the Cretonians. For example, as far as I remember, they dislike noise. So here we got to check that our spacing is right. Oh, let's put it down like that. If you want to make Creton uh, Dondorians super happy, you give them a place inside of the mountain. This is the best for them. This is the environment they love most. It is also worth mentioning that once you start introducing different cultures, they start liking different buildings. Humans, for example, love grand buildings and stone buildings, as do Dondorians. Uh, the Cretonians, they don't value these things too much. If you check back with the preferred materials of the Cretonians, they, they do like grand buildings. Ah, uh, sorry. No. So they, they do have something, they, they can accept that these buildings are cool, but wood is coolest. So outdoors is coolest as well. So there is a, a lot of different um, points of view here, but well, it helps out a lot to add in more, more different people into your city. And of course, I need to stress out that this is something we could have done a lot earlier already, you know? This is nothing that is exclusive for late game or so. You could actually get that done very, very early on. It doesn't uh, hurt you at all. It's quite the opposite is the case. You should go for cultures that go quite well with each other. Here I am introducing, by the way, one combo that does work quite decently. That is Cretonian, Dondorian and Human. These three cultures play along together quite nicely. They have no hate towards each other. They even like some things that uh, the others like too. And yeah, at this point we only need to pick up Mr. Dondorian and we can now get back to the work assignment thingy magic and if you check out the work priorities of the dondorians they have a very high work priority on the 
on the carpentries and all. And if we check back to the others, they will automatically pick these jobs up. You don't need to configure much here as the pre fab uh, configurations here are really good at uh, lapping people to the spots where they are really good at. With the Dondorians though, we might now want to, for example, to give you a good example of what you can do, go into the work priorities. And for example, we're going to go here and say, where are they? Everything is nice and dandy, but I want you guys mostly at the masonries let's see masonries first then the metal smelters and this way you can start giving this a little bit fine tuning so you will get the uh, the cut stone faster together for example this is really important because otherwise you will notice that uh the, these dudes, they will go just where they please. <laughs> you don't have much of a say in it. So, all in all, as you see there, city is growing. And we are now a multicultural bunch. This is really cool as this allows us to go further and further down the road. And as you see there, the Dondorian happiness is high enough to recruit another Dondorian. And so things go on and on and on. We just need to keep an eye out on our production versus consumption rate. Never lose that out of your sights. Our fruit orchard will now crank out its first harvest in a couple of days. Our income money-wise is a catastrophe. Somehow we've uh, lost most of our income in the last uh, couple of weeks, but this will come back as we are now exporting other stuff again. I'm pretty sure this was mostly because we had that huge import uh, wave for the tools, but yeah. The tool maker is now, well, we are going to unemploy him. It's okay, we have more than enough. Okay, so at this point, all we need to do is grab ourselves enough of these people until they are roughly filling up the workspaces that you desire them to. You can always check up what these guys are working when we are, when we are hovering over these areas. Don't forget to give these guys also access to the same things that other people have. This makes them a lot happier and it doesn't need to be that bleak and dreary for them as wood and stone are really easily, easily acquirable materials that you easily can always set up for the people. Also, I did a couple of things in the background and the, between the episodes. I plucked up another uh, cotton farm as I noticed that for some reason we are permanently under providing cotton. And I put up a food stall over here to make sure that this part of the map has access to food as well. And a lot of other little thingies that will help us out here. So, my good friends, it is sadly about time to end today's episode here, as I don't want to open another can of worms before the next episode. So, we now know the secrets of hosting various different cultures in our city. I gotta say, the game becomes much more complex now, because, you see, the humans and the Dondorians will not like the fact that we're not punishing the criminals properly. As we have these guys in the minority in the city, not about, not much of a big deal, but you will always have to consider how many of a certain culture do you really want to bring into your city? How much of these guys do you need? Which will be the major point and whatnot. So, as you see here, I want to give you a quick example before we outro. So, we are now just cranking out the output tremendously by increasing the amount of Dondorians working in the city, as these guys are doing this task much better than the Cretonians ever would have been able to. So, this is a trick that allows you to just circumvent a lot of bottlenecks because for example if we've had a bunch of cretonian carpenters a while ago oh boy things could have been a lot easier already but for the sake of simplicity i wanted to introduce these things layer by layer as i find the game can be quite overwhelming at times now we're going to leave it like that for today and i hope you enjoyed we are going to continue next episode with lots of other goodies Still need to wrap up my mind around what topics will be next. 
I think we are on a good way to go into military and the other things soon. We are pretty much uh, covered. We we have pretty much covered, like I'd say, two thirds of the base game are already explained. There's still the overworld map part and the military part, so there's still a lot of meat on the bone. But we are getting closer to the end of this tutorial series, episode by episode. I want to thanks every. Uh, I want to thanks. Yeah, I want a grandma as well. I want to thank everybody watching this. Please feel free to leave a comment or two. Feel free to leave a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I'm always happy to have you guys. In the description box below, you will find links leading to the rest of the tutorial series. Ideal if you just came in new to this. And of course, there's also links to my Patreon, Paypal, and buy me a coffee. So if you'd be so kind to support the channel, I'd be more than delighted. And of course, consider checking out the Discord server. And I would love to have a chat with you folks. Either way. Thanks for being around, thanks for watching these videos until the very end, and see you soon. Bye-bye.